here we go. The Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Long delay, I realize. A couple reasons for that. First of all, again, thank you so much for being here. I think happy 2021 is in order. We're still in January. Yeah, I have obviously have a lot on my mind, so I think I could record a three-hour podcast, but I, I assure you I'm not going to do that. But on Christmas Day, I broke my ankle, and so, boy, my life has been sort of uprooted the last month, dealing with limping, a boot, not being able to exercise, constant elevation, icing. It really hasn't been until the last really last few days where I've been able to put any sort of pressure on it. It's been really, it's been really challenging to be completely honest. Um, And I've been really struggling with it a lot. I think I go down this path psychologically where, and I think a lot of it is because I dealt with a lot of health issues as a child, but I go to this place where am I never going to get any better? I don't trust that my body is going to be able to take care of itself. And I I realize that I'm strong and I exercise, I eat well, and our bodies are formidable and able to recover. And I have. It's just taken a long time. And I worry, you know, sometimes like, gosh, am I going to be able to jump and run and ride my bike like I used to? And I realize I also struggle with this idea as as terrible as this last month has been, I'm, I'm still lucky. And I, it could have been worse when I fell, my body completely gave out. It was this strange, like a shot, a wave of lightning went through my body. I almost felt like I passed out. It was very strange because the pain was so immense and you know, as awful as it was, I could have needed surgery I could have landed on my head. I'm just having a hard time navigating life sometimes and how fucked up it is. And of course, I see the beauty. I know how lucky I am. I do so many things every day that I love. But the world around me is just feeling pretty just pretty destructive and confusing. And life in itself is confusing and destructive. And I think this last month has been really challenging for me. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, there must be a lesson in that. And and I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think life is just chaos. Makes no sense. And if you can squeak out a good year, a few great days in a row, then you're doing pretty well. Um, something, there's a few things I want to talk about. Again, I, I know this could be a really long podcast, but um, I, I also want to talk about the song that I released, but not really the song per se. You know, I put out this song Freedom about a month ago, and the response has been really wonderful. Uh, you know, it's it's getting more views and listens than any song I've released, and it's just the first of like nine songs from the record. But something that I've not liked about this process. And you know that I'm quite critical of, of social media, and I, I firmly stand behind that. But with the, with the song over, you know, I'm working with a PR company, and now I have to promote and tell people about my song on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and all that jazz. And I don't like it. And I, I think I've realized what it's doing, it's bringing me down the feedback loop where what people think is now sort of on my mind. And, and I, I don't like it. All these, all these companies, you know, Instagram and Spotify, they, they all show numbers. How many people liked it? How many people watched? How many people are listening? And somehow it's turned the craft of art uh, the grading system, it's sort of turned it down. It's, it's, it's turned it into a numerical number. How frustrating. How shallow. You know, I, I think I, I put this playlist together on Spotify, my favorite all-time songs. 
And these are songs that shaped who I am, shaped the way I create music. And I've listened to these songs like hundreds and hundreds of times. And emotionally, they all take me on this journey and they inspired me to try music in different ways. And just they've, they sometimes, you know, you can't explain the joy and the emotional impact that a good song can have on your life. And it just feels like Instagram and Spotify sort of just turns our lives into a numerical number, turns our craft into a numerical number. And it's frustrating. And it's like, you know, I create and make these these songs and do the podcast because I find immense joy from it all. But now that it's over, you know, of course I want people to hear my music, but then it just instantly sort of takes me down this path of looking at numbers, how many people watched, how many followers. And I hate that about myself. And I think it's a normal response. I think we all have that tendency to look at the numbers, look at the response. And it's kind of a drag. And what's so frustrating, I was talking to my PR manager about all of this, and he was giving me instructions on how to post and how often to post. And and then he said something like, you know, and by the way, you, you need to be on the platforms. You can't just post your photo of your album and then get off. You have to engage. You have to interact with other people or else Instagram and Facebook aren't going to put your post at the top of people's feeds. It's not even going to be seen. And if you know me, I typically just go on, post my shit, and then get off. But then he's telling me, well, you you have to do more. So that means in order for my music, my posts to be seen, I have to spend more time scrolling and wasting time staring at other people's posts on social media, which is the last thing that I want to do. It's, it's quite frustrating. And then Facebook, if you don't pay to boost your post, barely anybody's going to see it. I have like six, 700 fans to, on my Facebook page, and I'll post something, and it'll say below it, you know, this post reached 15 people. So 15 of the 700 people saw my post. So what that means is that then you have to pay to get more people to see your post. People who have chosen to like your page, follow you, you still need to pay Facebook money so that those people will even get to see what you posted. I mean, think of the insanity of all of that. It's just been a challenging, interesting last month, just not only health-wise and physically, but then I literally released my song Freedom in the middle of December, so I've been spending the last five, six weeks promoting it. And it's just sort of mentally taxing and exhausting. And I can just see my brain is going down that that world of caring what people think. And that's not a healthy place to be. really brief segment here, but something I just want to briefly talk about. I have come to the realization that we need to stop paying attention to the news and the media. And I've realized over the last six weeks, I mean, I've, I've seen it coming, but There's been some dynamic shifts in the last week or two ever since Joe Biden became president. And let me just say, I'm happy he won. I think we need a politician to be running this country, not somebody with a personality like Donald Trump. But I've realized the media is creating a world where They want you to judge people before you even get to know them. They want you to think that anybody that may be a Republican is a bad human being. And I've never liked politics. I tried majoring in politics for whatever reason in college, and within a week I I left and became an English major because I just 
felt the judgment and polarization. And what the media is doing, very similarly to what social media does, it's turning human beings into one-dimensional robots. You know, if you use social media all day and scroll, your brain isn't functioning at a high level. And what I think is happening is when you have technology addiction at an all-time high, it's turning people's brains into mush. It's a subtle shift. It's not like heroin. It's not like pot where instantly your brain turns to mush. It turns to mush. It's within a few years. And so the media is taking advantage of people's idiotic state and throwing these blanket statements out at people, making people one-dimensional fragments of themselves. And I think, I, I hope that people aren't buying it, but I'm friends with Democrats, Republicans. We disagree. We agree. And I think the world wants you to not be friends with people that you disagree with. It's like we somehow are being turned into these types of people where you need to be around people that agree with you, and that's it. And then the media is finger-pointing. I think to myself, over the last few years, you know, I, I don't blame Donald Trump. Donald Trump, to me, is just like everybody else in this tech-obsessed world. Narcissistic, sociopathic, and self-absorbed. He didn't create this mess. This has been a process that's been happening over the last, I don't know, five to ten years. We became obsessed with image, thanks to like Paris Hilton, National Enquirer, celebrities. And then the phones and social media allowed people to sort of turn themselves into their own celebrity. People are less caring. People aren't listening. People are becoming more self-absorbed and more into their image and their brand. And that's what Donald Trump is. He's doing what everybody else is doing. I think it's a little more frustrating and eye-opening when the president of the United States is acting like a child, who's acting like Paris Hilton, who's all about himself. This is a long time coming. Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor. Jesse the Body Ventura, who's an ex-wrestler, was the governor. Our culture has been slowly dumbing down for years. And so... The media is taking advantage of that because people can't critically think as well as they used to. They are turning, they are dividing people even more by throwing these blatant statements out, pointing fingers, and categorizing millions of people as this or that, and you shouldn't even associate with any of them. And it's quite damaging to our culture right now. But I think you need to be really aware of how your frame of mind is affected by what you watch and listen to. I think you have to be really careful being aware of the amount of time that you spend on social media because it is turning your brain into a fragment of itself. You aren't able to critically think for yourself. And so if you stare at your phone for an hour and then watch the news, your brain isn't able to distinguish the difference. It's just constantly consuming, constantly consuming, but you're not really thinking. I think the goal here today is to think about yourself as either a zombie or a human being. Are you thinking for yourself? Are you critically thinking? Or have you allowed the media and social media to turn your brain into mush? And I want to play this clip for you. I'm actually, I'm going to play a few clips from the Sam Harris Show, but I'm going to start with this one. What we need now are people who understand their own minds and who also understand the world. I mean, I studied with some of the greatest meditation masters who were alive at the end of the 20th century. These were extraordinary teachers, but they didn't know a damn thing about most of what I talk about on this podcast. And if they were alive today, they still wouldn't. And it is a very good thing that people like that aren't in charge of our cyber war capabilities, because then we wouldn't have any. 
we have to play this game on multiple levels. So it's great that many of you are getting value out of waking up. But if you don't like me in this mode, when I'm actually doing my best to respond to a real emergency in our culture, if you don't understand that we need to mount a competent response to the challenges we face on a hundred fronts, you're not really getting what I'm teaching over there at Waking Up. You can't let meditation turn you into a new age goofball who just burns incense and thinks that the universe is one big mystery and that everything happens for a reason. Sometimes things happen for bad fucking reasons and a whole generation or generations lose the most basic capacity for order. So that's something I struggle with and, and something that really frustrates me about Instagram and yoga teachers. So many of them profess to have the answer that everything is happening for a reason. Because And I think people do that, specifically yoga teachers, because it sort of adds some sort of peace or control in this world of chaos. And I can't begin to tell you, there, there was no reason for me to break my ankle. And the, um, the sheer pain that I was experiencing, what good did that give me? What good came from the last three weeks where I had to put everything aside and basically lie on a couch all day? Now, I certainly read like four or five books in a few weeks. Um, so that was great. I watched a couple television shows that were interesting. But my life was put on hold. And I think that I wake up every single day grateful that I breathe, that I have my health. I put in immense hours every single day to the things that I love because I know that life is really fragile and I know that this could all end tomorrow. I, I don't know if yoga teachers or people that say everything happens for a reason, I, I wonder if they're aware of the, this idea that maybe things don't happen for a reason. Maybe it's chaos every single day. And we have to somehow manage some sort of order, some sort of understanding, some sort of peace and tranquility in this bizarre, insane world. So I posted about two weeks ago a photo of me in my boot, you know, just lying on the couch. I, I think I actually posted a photo of my inflamed, swollen ankle because it, it was so gigantic. And again, I think my parents were probably trying to, you know, rest my mind and put me at ease. But I've sprained my ankle before and I had never seen my ankle explode like this. The amount of pain, I couldn't walk. It, it was just crazy. And, I, and my uncle's a, a doctor. And so I sent him a couple photos on Sunday when we got back to L.A. And right away he said, um, I think you need to go to a doctor. So um, the next day I went to the orthopedic surgeon here in Cedar sinai And there we go. So this was really this interesting experiment. It wasn't even meant to be an experiment. But I posted a photo in my stories of me and my boot. Uh, and I also posted a photo of my swollen, broken ankle. And... You know, maybe a few hundred people saw it, a couple hundred people. I think I posted it on my Facebook stories also. And I got a few people that wrote back or said, oh my, you know, what happened? But the vast majority, I, I, think I, could, I think I could tell you the names of them. There was like Jake, Caitlin, Corey, um, Nathaniel. I think it was a few others. But the vast majority of people didn't even say anything. Like, oh my God, what happened to you? Are you okay? Imagine how apathetic of a world we live in where somebody could post a photo of a broken ankle and to think that if you really care about this person, wouldn't you think to reach out or respond and say, oh my God, Eddie, are you okay? The vast majority of people, people who I thought were my friends, and again, I did not post these photos with any sort of intention or 
trying to get attention or sympathy. I think I'm probably bored sitting on the couch all day. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll post a photo of my foot. And I just, as a few days went by, I started thinking to myself, wow, most people over 90% didn't even say anything or acknowledge or say, gosh, are you okay? And I felt like that's the world that we live in right now. So people are either so numb or completely unaware while they're staring at their phone to even think that that photo is unusual. I mean, most maybe people are so used to seeing selfies and sort of like bikini shots. But then I would think to myself, well, if here's a guy who's generally healthy, who doesn't post much stuff about his feet, <laughs> suddenly he's in a boot, suddenly he's posting like a broken ankle shot. Wouldn't you think to sort of, you know, reach out to this person and say, how are you doing? Are you okay? Nothing. It's just the the amount of apathy that we live in right now is insurmountable. People just don't care. And again, I'll, I'll even share an amazing, amazing response that I did get. I post a photo of my boot. And one of my friends, their response to that photo is merely a question mark. And then I write back and say, oh, God, I broke my ankle a couple weeks ago. It's getting a lot better. And then their response after I wrote that was thumbs up. Imagine our world is being reduced to not sympathetic questions like, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? Is there anything that I could do for you? Actually, Larissa reached out to me and Julie reached out to me. But instead of those questions... And if I'm forgetting any of you, I apologize. Instead of those questions, somebody is literally putting a question mark. Instead of articulating the words, Eddie, are you doing okay? We have been reduced to a question mark. And then after I give my sentence response where I'm telling this person, you know, I broke my ankle, but I'm getting better. The response to that isn't great. That's amazing news. I I don't know what. The response to that is a thumbs up. It's, it's mind-blowing to me. And I, I think, in what state of mind is somebody in when they see somebody with a broken foot or a broken ankle or like lying in a hospital bed? In, in, at what point is somebody going to extend themselves and reach out and ask them, hey, are you doing okay? I want to play... Another clip from the Sam Harris show, and then I'll let you go. So you're going to rely on the restraint of people who have just risked their lives to break into the Capitol, who believe that there's a global conspiracy of child raping cannibals running the world, people who have never received anything other than a wink and a nod from the president of the United States on those very points. Granted, much of the footage of this attack on the Capitol is perplexing. You've got a cop taking selfies with some of the crowd. You've got cops seeming to let people in after others had broken through their ranks. And then you've got everyone just wandering around taking selfies and vandalizing the place. Some of the footage that makes it look like a busload of people headed to Burning Man just decided to use the restrooms at the Capitol. Some of the people are surprisingly old, right? But other footage reveals that this was an absolute emergency to not acknowledge the gravity of what happened here, to not acknowledge the degree to which it disgraced our country. And w- So he then goes on to blame, well, actually, I'll keep playing it for you. Hold on. He weakened it in the eyes of the world. Yes, the BLM riots were also a disgrace. And yes, the press contortions around them were also a disgrace. To have CNN anchors say, as a dozen cities were being set on fire, well, whoever said protests need to be peaceful, that was a disgrace. To have a journalist on camera trumpeting the mostly peaceful protests, even while cars and buildings burned in the background, that was all a disgrace, right? And just amazing dark comedy. And yes, it was insane, patently insane 
to see calls to defund the police as social order was unraveling across our country. But what happened this week was altogether different. Nothing like this has ever happened in our country before. I mean, this was a desecration of our government. So I'm going to stop it there. And this is where I disagree with Sam. I don't see this is any different. You know, people like Sam, far left liberals, not even far left, want to blame Donald Trump for this world, for what happened at the Capitol. But this is no different. Donald Trump, to me, is no different from Paris Hilton, anybody else out there on Instagram right now or Twitter, trying to get their voice heard or trying to get attention. That is the world that we've turned into. And for Sam to just sort of brush aside those people in the Capitol taking selfies or just kind of like hanging out, standing around, cops taking selfies, you can't dismiss that behavior. I know, Leo. Yeah, part of me feels that it was an emergency and a tragic moment in American politics, American society and culture. But to me, it's just like everything else that's going on. Donald Trump is doing what everybody else is doing. Now, it's, it's really challenging for people to come to terms with the fact that the President of the United States is tweeting and acting like an imbecile. But that's, that's what our world has sort of turned into. Self-obsessed imbeciles. Anybody out there to definitively say that they know what's going on? I mean, Sam just sort of ignores the selfies that are going on. And there's also footage of people, um, cops, letting protesters in the building. And then Sam goes on later in the show and says, maybe the... Washington, D.C. police chief was getting Donald Trump back. I mean, nobody really knows what's going on. And the media wants to pretend that they know. I was just watching Don Lemon on CNN, and he has basically said that everybody that is at the Capitol was a racist or white supremacist. Imagine, he's saying that to millions of people. And then we have um, Ariel Pink who apparently was, he's a singer-songwriter, and he was dropped by his label. Now, the label is saying that he's dropped because he was at the protest, although he didn't do anything violent, he didn't break into the Capitol building. But then if you actually do a little research, you come to find out that Ariel Pink also has been accused of sexually assaulting slash harassing ex-girlfriends. So maybe he's actually getting taken off of his label because he's actually a pig, and it has nothing to do with him being at the Capitol building. But we don't know what to believe anymore. It, it's this strange mishmash combination of selfish imbeciles, people obsessed with their image. That's like half of the world. And the other half is just like deranged. You can't, you, you have no idea what to believe anymore. And then when you have people like Don Lemon pl making blanket statements about people that he doesn't know, that's, I think, the most frustrating. That's one of the most frustrating aspects of the media, making these declarations about people that they don't know. You know, it, you can hate politics and think. What's going on in the way the media is using specific words and brainwashing people, maybe this is all for a reason. It's possible. And again, that's looked at as weird and psycho and conspiratorial. But is it? If you have people on television every single day labeling people a particular way, if you have commercials, news outlets guilting people into staying home, what are the repercussions of all of that. What's going to happen to the world? And I think it's happened. 
I was in line the other day at the, at the pool. They have these circles on the cement where people should stand. Somebody was literally about eight inches away from the circle, and another woman in line was berating her, calling her selfish and insensitive because she wasn't standing in her circle. That is the world that we have been reduced to. And it's fucking scary. So, happy to be back. I'm happy that my foot is getting better. Hope to be out of this boot in the next few days. I have a couple podcasts lined up. I recorded one with the drummer and my friend Adam Gust. I'll be uh, be editing that this week. New music still coming out. I have a new song called Verses that comes out on the 29th on Spotify. It's on Bandcamp now. So visit eddiecone.bandcamp.com to check it out. I am eddiecone.com is my website. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, say hello. Actually, you know, last, last point here. I really want you to think about, in your day-to-day life, how your thinking is affected by what you watch or who you listen to. How easy it is for the brain's opinion or mind of some, how the, the brain's opinion or attitude towards something can quickly shift. I want you to pay attention to that this week. And that's why I talk about If it's pounded over and over again in the media that you should wear a mask, that all people that are at the Capitol are white supremacists, I mean, all of these declarations about millions of people pounded over and over again, the reminder to wear your mask. If you don't wear a mask, you're an insensitive asshole, guilting you to wear your mask. I want you to pay attention to how your mind in decision-making is impacted by the television you watch or the news outlets that you watch because the mind is so... it's, It's so easily manipulated. So just pay attention to that. And again, this show is trying to get people to think objectively. So, as always, appreciate you listening. If you enjoy the show, head over to iTunes. Please give it a review or a five star. You have to share the show with your friends. Tell them about it. I have amazing guests that I've had on the show. Huge library of great episodes. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, at Eddie Cohn. I am EddieCohn.com is the website. You can find me on YouTube where you can see the music videos that I've just put out. So lots of stuff going on, as always. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all listening. Thanks for supporting and being a part of the Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral podcast.